death masks go back hundreds, if not thousands of years and were a way of preserving the face of the deceased forever. Beethoven, Oliver Cromwell and Napoleon all had them made shortly after their deaths. Now it seems they're making a comeback. Gareth Furby has been to meet a specialist in Highgate. Nick is a musician, but he also makes death masks. So you've got the guy laying here dead. I literally just pour it out of the bowl and the whole of his head is completely covered in this thick blue moulding substance. This was the former manager of a Soho club. The mask was commissioned by his friends. That's exactly how he looked when he died. And as you can see, it, it picks up every detail. Nick Reynolds says he's now made almost 100 death masks. The thing is, I tend to only remember the famous people uh, with the death masks. But reminders, copies of some of the masks are scattered throughout his flat. This was a guy that was executed in Texas for a crime he didn't commit. I mean, it's the first time I've done a corpse where the body was still warm. And in the kitchen, which is Nick's workshop, there are some new commissions. One so recent, we've been asked to hide the face in case he's identified. He was a teenager who died suddenly. The last two I've done have, have been young. I actually found it very hard to do. You know, if you've got children and I've got two boys as well. But Nick says a death mask helps some people deal with their grief. When somebody dies, the loved ones that are still alive will look at the photograph, whatever, they'll have a weep. But that photograph isn't tactile, it's not three-dimensional, it doesn't have any weight. A death mask does. Some people, they take the death mask to bed with them. They wake up in the morning, it's, they roll over and bingo, it's on the pillow. Hello, honey, how are you doing? You know. Uh, but they're tremendous, tremendous cathartic tools and they help people come to terms with losing somebody. I have had moments of, you know, of uh, just talking to him on my own, yeah, and it has been helpful. Joe Corrie, who runs the company Agent Provocateur, commissioned Nick to make a death mask of his father, the artist and performer Malcolm McLaren. It's better than a photograph. It's like I remember him. I keep that on top of the cupboard with one of my hats on top of it. <laughs> A copy of the mask is now in Highgate Cemetery. It was made while his body lay in a morgue in Chalk Farm. My exact thought, I walked in, wow, that's Malcolm. He looks good for a corpse. Love the smile. Nick's masks can cost upwards of £2,000. The Highgate Cemetery Trust says if more death masks are now being made, it would be good to see more on display. Gareth Furby, BBC London News.